नमस्कार वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून डियर लर्नर्स आई डॉक्टर रेनू तोमर वेलकम यू बैक ऑन द डिस्कशन अबाउट कॉन्सेप्ट मीनिंग एंड एम ऑफ एजुकेशन फ्रेंड्स एज वी डिस्कस दैट दिस इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक एज वेल एज इम्पॉर्टेंट एरिया फ्रॉम द परस्पेक्टिव दैट इट इज वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम द फाउंडेशन ऑफ एजुकेशन इफ यू नो एंड यू दोज हु आर द स्टूडेंट ऑफ एजुकेशन दे मस्ट बी नोइंग दैट दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ द पेपर ऑफ फाउंडेशन ऑफ एजुकेशन और फिलोसॉफिकल फाउंडेशन ऑफ एजुकेशन इन यू जी दैट इज बी एड बी ए एज वेल एज बी एल एड एज वेल एज द पी जी दैट इज एम एड और एम ए एजुकेशन सो फ्रेंड्स वी इन अवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई हैव टॉक्ट अबाउट दैट हाउ द एजुकेशन हैज बीन व्यूड बाय डिफरेंट एजुकेशनिस्ट और अकेडमिशन वर्ल्ड वाइड वी हैव ऑल्सो टॉक्ट अबाउट दैट वाई एजुकेशन इज परसिव्ड एज अ यूनिलेटरल बायपोलर एंड द ट्राईपोलर प्रोसेस नाउ कंटिन्यूइंग विद द सेम लेट एस टॉक अबाउट हाउ द एम्स ऑफ एजुकेशन हैव इवॉल्ड इफ वी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड एम ऑफ एजुकेशन फ्रॉम द हिस्टोरिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू लेट एस टॉक अबाउट इंडिया बिकॉज इंडिया एज अ कल्चर एज अ नेशन इज द ओल्डेस्ट एंड Uh, as we also discussed in our previous lecture that the aims of education are given in the veda as well as upanishad from from the perspective of the ancient india the ideal of life was spiritualistic so the educational aim was also derived on the same line and aim of education was self realization or realization of brahma or the absolute and if we have a look from the spartan society perspective let us compare the indian society the ancient indian society with ancient spartan society ancient india was spiritual in nature satisfied happy that is why the aim of education was self realization or realization of brahma or the absolute and the spartans were educated their children not to become individuals but to become a fighter because spartan understood education as a tool which was socialistic friends as you can understand that in ancient india the aim was individualistic because when we are talking about enlightenment enlightenment is individualistic and after getting enlightened only we can talk about serving the process serving serving the other people around but from the spartan perspective education is socialistic that means each man was born not for himself but for the state that means the state itself was a school the immediate aim of the state control system of education was to train the youth in military barracks away from the home to develop a hardy mind in a hardy body to produce courageous soldiers individual liberty was thus not allowed so education in the case of a spartan state was primarily physical in fact if we compare it with the athens in the athen the individual occupied the pivotal role and the education as a field was talking about or was aiming at harmonious development of personality harmonious development means physical intellect moral and aesthetic so we can see uh, uh, we can compare the education as it has been seen by the three different old ancient civilization one which that is india which is looking at education as responsible for or aiming at self realization or realization of brahma or the absolute spartans which are looking at education as completely socialistic and has nothing to do with individual needs or individual taste or individual demands in fact it saw state as a school and responsible for producing courageous soldiers so individual liberty was not allowed then we have athens in this society the individual occupied the pivotal role and that is why they viewed from the education aiming at at harmonious development of personality that is physical intellectual moral and aesthetic when we talk about harmony between individual and the state that can only come if the individuals are being developed for the state as well as individual needs are being taken care of 
so uh, so the immediate aim of the education as it has been stated by aristotle socrates plato and aristotle is develop a beautiful mind and a beautiful body that means the greek idealist they discarded the extremely individualistic aim of education they uh, socrates in particular emphasized on the acquisition of universal and eternal knowledge of the truth while plato advocated harmonious development of all powers of the individual and equated personal realization with social solidarity in fact aristotle championed the ideal of harmony between the individual and the society between intellect and the character and theory and practice so that is why aristotle is usually seen as the most practical and uh, plato is seen as most idealistic and socrates is seen as most spiritual because he emphasized on acquisition of universal and eternal knowledge of the truth so uh, from the greek point of view we understand that education has been seen by the well known education educators from the from, uh, from that era differently even the teachers and their students also perceived socrates plato and aristotle as all know they are the they they share the teacher and the pupil ratio uh, people uh, relation and uh, now let us talk about the ancient romans ancient romans had no interest in the acquisition of purely theoretical knowledge their outlook was materialistic so their highest aim of life was the attainment of materialistic success so the roman education was catering to produce a worthy citizen of the roman state able to enjoy the rights and perform the duties of the citizen during the middle ages the education became different and in fact it became wholly a priestly affair because it was basically ruled by two aspect one was mysticism another was chivalry and as far as scholastic dominated life was concerned that became rooted in the mid, in the middle ages in fact education became absolutely formal in character and religious in outlook and as the time passed this liberal humanistic education degenerated into the artificial and formal system so as we can understand this artificial education as we call it the, the realistic movement questioned it and it was questioned by the lead, under the leadership of bacon and comnius according to them ignorance was at the root of all evil so they pleaded spread of universal and integrated knowledge and the child's individuality was questioned and his powers and interests were also given supreme importance so due to religious and social psychological and pedagogical reason a new theory of education known as theory of mental or formal discipline came into vogue now let us talk about john locke he is also known as a very important educationist who played a very important role in the evolution of education as we understand john locke was the historical representative of this new doctrine and he saw that the aim of education was to produce a sound mind and a sound body so from that perspective we understand that education could discipline all the discipline all the faculties such as memory imagination perception thinking etc so they they saw students as clear slate and it was responsibility of the society the society which was performing itself or working through the teachers it was responsibility of the society to give us the individual which the the students uh, who had all the memory imagination perception and thinking uh, developed in the uh, in the complete manner and that was disciplined as per the requirement of the society in fact the uh, now let us talk about the naturalist because naturalist they they different dif- they were different in the perspective they did not share the perspective of the uh, the previous school in fact they revolted against the existing artificial and demoralized system of education john j uh, j rousseau who is known to be the cham- champion of the cause of the common people and also the cause of the child he took up the cause of the child in the field of education and he propagated the theory of naturalism so naturalism appeared in education and rousseau's concept of negative education emphasized education according to nature he said that the child is a nature a child has one's own nature and the outside world also has a nature 
so child should be regarded as important and the nature should be regarded as important and they should be given the central factor in the field of education so as far as ruzu is concerned the aim of education should be the spontaneous natural self development of the child nature in the close contact with nature kant also was influenced by the individualistic concept of education and defined education as the process by which man becomes man through his voluntary efforts so friends as we understand that in the middle era we had a different kind of schools who viewed education differently so that is why we had idealism we had naturalism we had existentialism which we will be discussing later on in our lectures when we will be talking in detail about the philosophy now let us try to understand that how pestology introduced education or understood education pestology introduced the psychological tendency in education and with it the child centric movement in education received a new momentum and the flip according to him the education was process of spontaneous unfolding of latent powers of individual towards perfection now let us talk about the herbert spencer herbert shouldered his task and he developed a systematic psychology of the method of teaching fribel another german idealist regarded education as the spontaneous development of joyful creative self activity from the above survey what we conclude is that the educational ideals have kept on changing as per the requirement of the world or as per the Uh, propagations given by the different educationists and it is evident that the aim and function of education have been variously defined in different ages by the different educators hence we can conclude by saying that the aims of education are not fixed and static but they are subject to the constant change and dynamic from here on let us try to understand what different aim of education has been given by uh, or we can understand uh, because when we are talking about here aim of education in the present era and the current times we have to understand that the aim of education have not just undergone the change but have also um, been uh, enhanced by the different if you talk about the indian society or the india as a nation then the different policies have also given aims of education uh, aim of education we had different when uh, in the britishers time the aim of education were different when we had the muslim era aim of education were different in the vedic times we aim of education were different when the we were uh, we the british rule was uh, was uh, had ended and we had introduced our own education system so so education system as it has undergone the changes as per the changes in the society or the or the political system we have got the different aims of education but there few aims have remained the same so let us try to understand and talk about the aim of education the first aim is aim for human resource development what does aim of human resource development means if we understand from the perspective of human resource development that means that we have to introduce certain skill among the student that means as a teacher we are responsible for training the students in certain skill or provide them certain expertise in the area which will help them to take up certain work as he or she grows up so one of a purpose and most important purpose is aim of human resource development that is skill creation or we can say knowledge creation or we can say information providing to the child which he, he or she can use in the future when he starts working another aim is individual aim of education what does individual aim of education uh, as an individual i can be having a different kind of a aim my aim can be simply as to learn or educate myself uh, in a spiritual field somebody may be interested in understanding ad, uh, or uh, getting educated in a different field so everybody has a different kind of aim and that aim is being fulfilled by the education through its different means here we are not talking about only the curriculum the curriculum is not there to fulfill the individual aim of education uh, but there are different means through which we all of us are get, getting educated through books we are getting educated through newspaper we are getting educated as per our requirement suppose if i am a student of economics then i would like to understand that how the economic in 
nation as well as globally is taking uh, directions or we can say it is moving. So, we will try to understand economy of uh, in India as well as the global economy. So, my interest will be to develop understanding of economy, understanding of stock. If I am a medico, then naturally my aim will be to improve my understanding of the medical field may it be from the technical perspective may it be from the uh, knowledge perspective. So, every individual has the individual aim the farmer uh, would try to educate himself as far as technology is concerned knowledge is concerned as to improve his farming skill and to get the best output. So, uh, here we can understand that every individual person has an individual aim of education and this is also a perspective for which education has to work upon that is why we have the uh, not just the formal system we have the informal as a non formal system of education developed in almost in all the nations to cater to this particular aim of education. Now, let us talk about the social aim of education what does social aim of education means social aim of education means that society has certain requirement from each one of us and that aim has to be fulfilled through education and who is going to work for that the school will work as a uh, school will work and pioneer in this field as to fulfill these aims. As we when we talked about the evolution of education we talk about the different societies as they have existed. There we also talk about the need of different society as we talk about Sparta then what kind of social aim did it have the state was a society the state was uh, was superior to the individual and the result was that we had a aim of uh, aim of education was to create warriors and in the case of Athens the aim uh, the social aim of education was to create the people who were complete in oneself. So, it was working on development of all faculties may it be the memory may it be the uh, other faculties of the individual. So, the social aim of education is also very important and for that every nation or every state or every society and community tries. Now, let us try to take example uh, when we talk about decentralization of education why is it done because of the social aim of education we have the national aim we have the state aim of education but every community and society has also certain aims from uh, which education has to fulfill and how would that be done that can only be done if we have the education decentralized. So, this is basic reason why the education is seen at the uh, as something which should be worked upon at the grassroots level because the grassroots level understand the need of the society and the community well and those aims have to be fulfilled by the education. Another aim is vocational aim here when we are talking about the vocational aim that means particular vocation means uh, training person to become a cook training person to become a carpenter. So, for certain vocation we are giving training friends how is it different from aim for human resource development human resource development will encompass the knowledge learning as well as other aspects, but vocational aim when we are talking about that means we are completely completely focused at training aspect training of an individual to certain aspect. Let us talk about the another aim uh, which has been propagated by quite many educators that is liberal aim of education what is liberal aim of education that means we have to create for people who are free free of uh, that means uh, the in the society we have certain negativity and education is responsible for freeing individuals from that negativity or certain social ills. So, as far as the liberal aim of education is concerned that means that we are basically trying to build up the individual for uh, for uh, liberating him from the social level. So, this is also one of an aim another aim is uh, the leisure the education for leisure what does education for leisure means that means we want to enjoy life and we want to uh, that means if we are watching certain movie 
are we getting educated certainly so that means in the free time this is also an aim which is being fulfilled because if we talk about the media also if we talk about the movies also it is also one of a tool of education so free and unoccupied time of an individual generally known as leisure it is a time when which we can use in the creative manner and this is also purpose of the education that is providing the leisure aim in such a manner that it makes a person creative another important aim is the spiritual aim what is spiritual aim means the spiritual aim means the spiritual development of the individual should be the supreme aim of education this is how the spiritualist or we can say the idealist have seen the education as so mahatma gandhi had also attached great importance to the spiritual value in education so that means that the education should aim at bringing out spiritually the pious person or the best person another important aim of education is the adjustment aim adjustment because in every society in every community in even in the family they, this is something which we have to learn that is to adjust so adjustment being the primary role or uh, or rule in human life so this is also an aim which education has to take up then we also talked about the character formation or the moral aim what does moral aim means character formation or moral aim means that we are here concerned about the whole conduct of human being like vivekananda and gandhi both emphasized on the character building in education how can character be built in the education for character building we have to educate people as to get rid of the social evils and we have to make them visualize the society as they want it to be or as it should be in the best possible uh, profile or we can say in the best possible situation so uh, character education is also visualized as something which is related to contemporary socio economic and political situation so from this what we can understand is that education has to manifest this particular aim also in such a manner that individuals find themselves uh, understanding the moral requirement of the society or the nation friends here we have to understand when we talk about character formation or moral education it is not a universal name it can change not just from nation to nation it can change from community to community society to society as well so from here what we come down to is culture aim what is culture aim is culture aim means that we try to supplement the the culture of uh, the particular society through education so it uh, education should aim at producing men of culture and it it should not be because culture in itself is an ambiguous but it has to be streamlined systematized by education uh, when we talk about culture it means the norms it means the values and uh, they they have to be taught through the education so education is a tool as far as the culture aim is concerned now let us talk about the uh, uh, vocational aim we have talked about knowledge or information aim this has become very important that is providing the education uh, providing the knowledge because knowledge makes realist or visionary successful in any profession so presently currently if we see that education is aiming at providing knowledge with this another aim which is very important why education it has to play an important role in it because presently because of the social media as well as the different channels through which we can have knowledge there is knowledge which is not even certified and which is not accurate and which is not appropriate but there is no uh, so it is responsibility of the education as a system to provide the right kind of knowledge the knowledge which is indispensable for all right action and it should be source of power it should not take the children in a wrong direction another important aim is democratic aim of education what is democratic aim of education we have to understand that india being a democracy has certain expectation from its children hey, as a democratic aim we understand that uh, the the children should be able to think clearly and there has to be capacity for clear thinking as well as the scientific attitude of the mind develop and receptive to the new ideas that has to be developed as far as 
democratic and citizen aim of education is concerned. Another important aspect particularly when we talk about the India which is secular in nature, respect for the dignity and the worth of each individual that is ability to live harmoniously with one another and the sense of true patriotism and sense of world citizenship. This, these are also the requirement which education system has, uh, which the society has from the students and the education system is responsible for uh, bringing out this uh, changes in the individual and this is also an important aim. Another important aim is leadership aim. Leadership aim means that the child should be able to successfully perform the work and the qualities of justice, courage, discipline, tolerance, wisdom, sacrifice and initiative and understanding of the social issues along with the civic and vocational efficiency has to be developed in the young men and women in our country. From here on we have understood when we have talked about the different aim, it, we have understood that we cannot have holistic aims because a, there are multiple aims and the aims keep on changing as per the requirement of the nation and requirement of the society and requirement of the community. But education has to be flexible in a way as to serve the aims as it is expected to be. So friends, let us conclude what we have done today in the part 1 and part 2 of the series of lecture on aims of education along with the concept of education. We have tried to understand what education is. Education as we understand is derived from the educatum or educare which means to train, to mold, to bring up, to lead out, to draw out or to uh, populate that is from inward to outward. In the narrow sense, education means that it is fixed in time, it is fixed in curriculum, it is fixed in classes and fixed in subject and it is degree or certificate oriented. In the wider sense, it goes throughout the life from birth till death. Now we have also understood what are the aims of education and why needs, why do we feel that there is need of uh, aims of education. Aims of education are to bring certain desirable changes, give direction to the activity. We have also talked about the different aim of education. We have talked about the vocational aim. We have talked about the information aim. We have talked about the culture aim. We have also talked about the character formation aim or the moral aim and the spiritual aim and the adjustment aim, leisure aim, citizenship training aim and harmonious development aim as well as we have talked about the social aim and the complete living aim. In Indian context, we have talked about developing democratic citizenship and vocational efficiency along with developing the character and personality. We have also talked about in particularly from the perspective of India that they, there is an important aim that is educating for leadership and increase, increasing national productivity that is achieving social and national integration along with accelerating the process of modernization. So, uh, cultivating social, moral and spiritual values is also one of an aim and from the context of education. So friends at this note, I Dr. Renu Thomas shall take your leave with a note, with a promise to join you again uh, uh, on a different topic but uh, part of the philosophy of education. So friends, thank you for listening to me. Namaskar, Jai Hind, very good afternoon.